Uh, next we have uh, Mehdi Kandani. Did I say that okay? That's perfect. Uh, hey, Thank I got you. it right. Uh, from the University of Maryland, and he's going to talk to us about some fracture critical remote monitoring. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be presenting the work we have done on monitoring fracture critical bridges. So uh, I assume everybody knows the term very well. So the approach for monitoring uh, fracture critical is to monitor strain, kind of movements like tilt and change in the orientation and deflection of critical, cr uh, fracture critical members. So this is a specific technology we use. Uh, we, we developed this technology out of University of Maryland research and then um, the research span up under a company called Recensus. These are small wireless devices. We designed them for long-term monitoring, so each of these has a non-rechargeable battery inside. This is a precision tilt sensor. It can monitor movement or change in orientation of a member with a resolution of uh, a thousandth of a degree. This is a similar device for monitoring strain in a member. So this is the actual strain sensing element. This is a wireless transmitter connected to it. So these are pretty much easy to use devices, which we use for this purpose. They have long, long battery life. They are, most of these are adhesive mount, making them easy to attach to steel, kind of making the job of installation of them uh, quite fast and straightforward. These are uh, fully environmental proof, meaning that they can sustain all the, uh, the conditions, wide range of temperature, as well as kind of being waterproof and uh, pretty resilient in harsh environment. So uh, the, the complete system based on this technology includes a bunch of these devices we attach to fracture critical members. And uh, data comes to a device uh, which is a gateway, the, the, the one you see at the center. This is a, a pretty small device, like uh, eight by six inches with a solar panel on top. This device has a uh, cellular cellular modem inside, so it collects data wirelessly from all of these uh, wireless devices, and then uh, it streams it to a cloud-based server. Then from there, you'll see the, uh, the readings of these gauges essentially from anywhere in the world. So, you know, as far as you are connected to the internet. So I'm gonna go over uh, different kind of specific monitoring that we have been doing uh, with uh, Maryland State Highway and uh, other transportation agencies using this technology. So one of the specific things we do is monitoring raw care bearings. A lot of these are kind of very common in older designs. You have seen a lot of these. It happens from time to time. These raw care bearings get frozen. They don't move. This could be a result of uh, rusting. The bottom gets flat, doesn't have the curvature anymore. Or it could be simply lack of uh, lubrication or too much friction or debris kind of blocking them from moving. No matter what is the cause, when they start to move, you will get too much strain in your main supports, gearers or whatever system you are using. And with this technology, with these devices, when we attach them to bearings, they keep repeating the tilting on those bearings. And then all of these devices are temperature gauges as well. So it means that with tilt also, we report temperature. Of course, you know, when you want to see how good a bearing is, we use the tilt data with the temperature we read from a different sensor on the deck because essentially the tilting of the bearing responds to the deck temperature. Net at this, um, at the location of monitoring and bearing itself. And then we do a um, kind of pretty straightforward analysis. Some of the common analysis to know whether your bearing is working is just regression analysis, which means that we put the temperature of the deck with tilt reading on a graph like this, and that would give us per degree of uh, temperature change how much tilting you get. So, and then we put this in, into a geometric model where the, the length of the span and the, height, uh, the radius of the bearing as well as the, the, as well as the steel's uh, uh, coefficient of thermal expansion tells us what we measure with what we ex expect, how close they are. And this is going to be used as a way to find out how good the bearing is. 
Strain is next thing we monitor. So this is equally important. A lot of times in this specific case where we monitor the bearings, first we look at the bearings. So if the bearing is moving, it kind of addresses most of the concern. If it's not, now we look at the strain. Now that you have the bearing not moving, how much strain you get? So a lot of times, the kind of reading of strain we, we get from these sensors, this is one week data, is a combination of two components. One of them is thermal, like you see the slower, slower varying trend here, the one week data, this is a whole week. The slower portion, the slower changing portion, is response of the structure to temperature. And then you see the little spikes on top of it, this is live load, kind of trucks, whatever. Uh, causing kind of very transient short-lived strain spikes on the readings. Yet there is a third type of monitoring on these bridges is going to the piers. So a lot of times if you have frozen bearing, you may have overstrain on your gearers or uh, kind of truss members. It could also happen uh, very commonly that your piers get overstrain because your bearings don't move now, piers start deflecting back and forth. So what we do in such cases, we attach additional uh, precision tilt sensors. Like I mentioned, this sensor could monitor m kind of deflect and deflection on those piers with a resolution of a thousandth of a degree. So we see here in these graphs, we see uh, kind of approximately 120th of a degree or 0 0.05 degrees back, uh, up and down. And these are, I think, 10 day or one week data, 10 days of data. So these are kind of temperature response. Those, those piers slightly go to the left and to the right with temperature. So a lot of times this amount of deflection is safe. It's okay, it's benign. However, again, we do, uh, regression with temperature. If you see the pattern of moving changing, it means that new damage was, was, uh, uh, was uh, initiated on the pier. Why? Because before you had an intact pier, it was kind of deflecting all the way from the bottom to the top. Now you had a crack somewhere, it moves slightly differently. The pattern changes. So this is a kind of summary of the layout we use for most of this kind of bridges. We put those steel sensors on the uh, Bearings, again, a higher resolution version of the same hill sensors we put on the piers, and we also monitor strain in the supports, getters, or uh, trust members. The primary objective is to know the bearings, getters, piers, and have a complete uh, situation awareness, condition awareness on those bridges. So I'm gonna go over a uh, specific case study we did with uh, Office of Structures, Maryland State Highway. So this is a bridge uh, on I-70, uh, carrying the I-70 over Patapsco River. It's pretty close to here, uh, perhaps 20, 30 minutes, close to Baltimore City. So we had the sensors on the bridge. Um, essentially, what happened, the, a little bit of history, this bridge, um, inspectors found, found cracks both on the piers, Pier 4, uh, that side, Pier 4 and in some of the gators. They shut down the bridge and they did emergency repair on this because this was a pretty major road here in Maryland, quite busy. And then uh, they asked us to put one of these monitoring systems on this bridge to know what is going on. So the bridge was uh, repaired in summer of 2014, almost two years ago. They retrofit those gators and piers. The, the retrofits were quite strong. They, uh, they had a lot of strength to the bridge. And immediately after we put the monitoring system, late in summer of 2014, we realized that none of the bearings on this bridge move. So this is the westbound bridge, which was quite a different situation from the eastbound. So none of the bearings move. Bearings on piers two and three, which are in the middle, because these piers are pretty, pretty tall, non-functional bearing it's quite okay because the piers are tall, they can handle a little bit of deflection. However, a pier one had fixed, fixed bearings, no worries. However, pier four had a, s a slightly different situation. Number one is shorter. You see pier four is much shorter than piers two and three. And number two, the accumulated, the accumulated expansion of spans two and three all applied to pier four because now you have 
the combined force of spans two, three, and four. All of them kind of pushing gear four. So the initial result showed uh, right after the monitoring system was installed, which is, by the way, after retrofit were also there, showed that we see at this bearing 0 0.03 degrees of tilting per degree F. The expected response on this, coming from the, uh, those straightforward math math mathematical models, was 0.15. In other words, what we saw was 20% of the expected response. But we also had kind of strain and tilting of the piers. It showed that the bridge is in stable and good shape, even though the bearings were not moving. And then everything was on. We had winter of 2015, which was kind of a, a bit colder than usual. We have, you know, maybe half a dozen nights that temperature got below zero, which is quite uh, uncommon in Maryland. And then out of sudden, starting February and March, we saw these bearings started to move. They came back to life, <coughs> essentially. So this is what happened. We had non-functional bearings before. And then the way the, the bridge was kind of accommodating this by, was by cracks opening and closing on the piers and on the uh, girders. Now you had strong retrofits in place. And on top of it, you had a cold winter. Most of the time, the cold winter, the, the, the cool temperature puts additional stress because the uh, spans start to contract, and this kind of puts a lot of force. Now, the, uh, the effect of the, uh, uh, the pull force of thermal contraction combined with the effect of the uh, uh, kind of retrofit made bearings start to work. As you see later in 2015, we see 0.14, which is essentially nine, more than 90% of expected response. The expected was 0.15. What we saw was 0.14. And uh, accordingly, or consistently, we saw span force strain. We saw 4.8 micro strain per degree F. In other words, every degree of temperature change put additional almost 5 micro strain on the gear, I mean, meant daily we had some like 100 micro strain up and down just thermally. And then that went down to one micro strain. It's 80% decrease. Now you had a lot less strain on the gear. In pier one tilting, we saw 0 0.02 degrees per degree F kind of deflection back and forth. Now we had 0 0.0005. It was kind of much less deflection caused by temperature. So this is a kind of, uh, visualization of what I explained. This is two years worth of data. The blue is temperature, red is tilting of the uh, bearings on PR4. So you see initially in the first four months, right before the temperature dips for first time, which is winter of 2015, you see the red graph, very little variation. It's almost flat. It barely moves, but not much. And then out of that cold winter, which I, I've marked, you start seeing a lot of up and down in red graph, which means that this bearing has started to move. So this was a pretty good news and pleasant a surprise to us. So kind of a two close views, two graphs. One of them is uh, 2014. The other one is 2016. Sorry, there's a talk right here. This is last week, 20, uh, 2016. So the black is temperature. The top one is temperature. Red is tilt. You see kind of small negligible tilting of the, uh, the bearing. However, now last week data, you see the red graph kind of swinging or going back and forth or rocking, whatever, very well. So you see a good functional bearing on this bridge. Similarly, uh, this is a, a, uh, another graph showing uh, I think, yeah, this is strain. We see a lot of strain variation before that winter, and then strain kind of started to subside, kind of showing much less strain variation. And this is the pier. Similar situation before that winter, the pier was deflecting back and forth thermally. Now, after that winter, we see a pier that is quite flat. Of course, we still see those spikes, and these are made caused by the vibration of the trucks passing over this. But what we don't see anymore is this pier deflecting back and forth with temperature. 
significant. As you see, it's, you know, at the uh, winter, at the peak of the winter, it may approximately 0.1 degree. For a PF, 0.1 degree of deflection is quite significant. Uh, another common applications of these sensors is a pretty quick load rating. And this is kind of analytical load rating. When you want to see how much load a bridge can carry, and you want to have a kind of numerical support of your, your decision for load rating. So this is a project we did uh, with uh, Virginia Department of Transportation and on a uh, bridge close to Richmond Robert uh, Norris Bridge. The bridge is two miles over uh, Rappahannock River, I think. And uh, uh, we put these sensors on approximately 24, 25 floor beams. And then, you know, uh, the usual thing, a truck goes by uh, and we, we collect data and we use it for load rating. The nice thing about this approach is that the effort it takes to put these gauges on a bridge and do load rating is quite minimal compared to existing technologies. In a matter of half day, you have 20, 30 gauges, and then you run the truck, you collect data, and you will, be, uh, you, you will have a pretty, pretty accurate load rating for your bridge. So um, thanks to the Office of Structures here in Maryland State Highway Administration, we have put this technology on approximately 10 bridges here in Maryland. We have other uh, projects in Northeast. One of our bigger one was Gold Star in Connecticut. We did that with uh, AI engineers. They were here yesterday, and of course, Connecticut Department of Transportation. The, uh, the monitoring was quite similar, even though there we monitor mainly uh, uh, there, uh, we, we monitor mainly strain. Just kind of there were two bearings that they also wanted us to monitor. We, all, we also monitor Robert uh, Norris Bridge in Virginia, which I mentioned. In addition to load carrying capacity, you could also use this technology for other applications like detecting uh, uh, instances where when a truck violates your uh, kind of posted uh, rating or weight limit. If that truck passes and it causes too much strain on your bridge, this technology could detect those instances. Or generally here, we're more concerned about thermal induced deflection of those piers. However, uh, if you have bridges, and we did this uh, with one of SHA's bri bridges, if you have bridges where you have concerns about stability of the foundation, whether because of the soil mechanics or because of scour conditions or even because of nearby construction, you know, uh, you may have heard of like heavy construction activity that may cause, may affect your bridge, you could use those sensors to monitor stability or the general condition during those uh, events. And of course, um, we have linear position sensors, again, wireless, that could give you the, the absolute position of those joints, uh, th thermal joints on bridges. So the conclusion, this is a wireless technology. This is not yet another technology, one of the the kind of uh, important advantages of this technology is designed for long-term monitoring. So these sensors are designed for 10 years of battery life. They cover pretty a wide spectrum of sensing, so it gives you um, pretty much good coverage of what needs to be monitored on most of these bridges. They are easy to install because they are wireless, and these are small and adhesive mount. This is pretty important because a lot of time you don't want to close those lanes for extended times to put a monitoring system on your bridge. So being quick and easy to install is key in most of these bridges. And of course, in addition to the sensors, we, we have the complete solution, you know, the cloud data analysis and a lot of automated features in our software. Actually, we have a table here. Like I said, the base research was done with the university, however, we have spun off under this uh, uh, startup company called Swiss Census. If you are interested to see a, a pretty cool live demo, we have this model bridge, and we have a truck with a weight moving back and forth on it. You could see 
the demo. I would be glad to answer your question. Thank you. Did you close down traffic for your known load um, crossing the bridge? Um, yes, we did. But we are working on a second um, generation of the technology that we are hoping that you could do it without even closing the bridge or without the uh, truck with known uh, way. So essentially what we are trying to provide with this technology to give you complete statistics of strain on critical members. If you have that data, and you know kind of most of the statistical distribution of the, heavy, uh, the weight of the heavy trucks, so that would help you to know, for example, the top 1% of the heaviest trucks, how much strain they put on your critical members. And that could help you easily without even doing it. In this, in this specific project, we did close, but we are working on newer generations where you could do it without, even without closing do, or doing the truck tests. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, that's all the time we have now. Thank you.